Hi, my name is George Beatty, and for the next series of videos, I'm going to be taking you on my personal journey back into dairying. And we're going to have a look at things that I've been doing right and more things that I've been doing wrong. Throughout this series and this video, we'll be going around to different farmers and getting top tips on how they've improved their herds and what they've done. And hopefully I can bring some of that back with me and implement it here in the farm at home. Okay, so stage one for me getting back into cows was getting back into cows, is getting the cows. I'm now at a point where I need to decide what direction I'm going to take the farm in, what direction I'm going to take the cows in. There's so many different systems out there between high production, high EBI. It's just so hard to know what to do. So I'm really looking forward to talking to these farmers and seeing what they do and seeing what works. So first farm up is Larry Hannon. Larry Hannon is a split farmer. He's calving in both autumn and spring, which I'm trying to do here, although I've done 10 months of calving this year. And hopefully I can get some top tips off Larry and see how best to improve what I'm doing. Larry, how are you? George, how are you? You're very welcome to Fuller's Court Farm. Thanks a million. Yeah, Thanks no, for having me. Yeah, no problem. Sure, we'll have a good chat and discuss what happens here. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what, what to do right. <laughs> <laughs> So Larry, uh, what, what exactly are you doing here? We're in all year round milk production here. We're milking 220 cows um, on a high EBI grass-based split calving system. Compact calving is everywhere I go, everyone's talking about it. I mean, I can, can see the benefits and on paper it looks great, but from my point of view, with cows brought in, I've autumn calvers, I've got uh, spring calvers. I find it sometimes, if she doesn't go and calf in the spring, sure, I can just kind of run her on to late spring, early autumn? I mean, it didn't just happen for you overnight or, or, or did it? No, it certainly didn't. We, we came from a point that we would have been calving the last cow in, in early May and the first cow would have been calving in July. Sounds, so merely, sounds familiar. So we had to move away from that spread and it didn't happen overnight. It took 10 or 12 years, you know, but with the progression in, in breeding now that we have available to us, you know, that can be done a lot quicker. But I have reached a point where I can be critical and I can just cut it off. You will reach a point where the herd will, will generate enough within itself to, to increase. So you'll get more confident in, in your decisions as, as time goes by. And then the reasons for compact cabin and why I, I like it, it's, it's lifestyle is the main thing. So you have your busy calving period and then you have your busy AI period, but not one doesn't link with the other. And then once that's done, then you're at a point in the year where the, where the farm should be running, you know, humming really, that it's moving along, you know, in a simple way and it's not too labor intensive so that you can take time out and, you know, do what you want to do. And one concern a lot of people would say is, oh, you've so many calves at, at, at one time. Liquid milk guys would say, once you're calving all year round, you're never under that much pressure in terms of facilities. Compact calving has only helped calf welfare and calf health because you're totally focused on the job you need to do and the cows are calving in a shorter period of time. So you have even bunch of calves and you're able to rear them together and they have that herd mentality at an early stage. Whereas if you were calving 10 cows in, in November and five in December and five in January, the sheds don't get a break. It's critical to empty sheds and disinfect sheds. So to start each, each part of the year, you know, clean and ready to go again. How do you choose to, to, to breed off a cow? What, what tools do you use? We've milk recorded here and we've milk recorded for the last 35 years. So it's a very important tool. While it's not the be all and end all of everything, it is still important that you're able to go back and you know, you're able to identify the production of the cow and our ability to produce or generate offspring that will, that will only add to the herd. Certainly cell count is a very important part of it too to keep on top of that. Uh, have you started selective dry cow? Yeah, we, st we did our first cows last week with selective co dry cow therapy. Now, I've set the bar fairly high in terms of cell count because, you know, it's a dip your toe in the water phase we're in at the moment. And there are serious risks involved if it doesn't go right, like it goes horribly wrong. So it has to be, it has to be taken with caution as, a, as, a, as just a part of, of a, a new view on the dry cow. Well, I used the, the, the herd app and uh, I find it very helpful because it, it does that for you so you can, and it's there in front of you and you don't have to go anywhere looking for it so you can, as part of your selective dry cow therapy and the criteria are selected by me so I decide what I'm going to do and then the, the app does, selects the cows 
for me. What other stuff do you use her that for? Um, I would use it for the due to um, functions on it, so due to dry, due to calve. It's, it's very handy there. It's in front of you. You're out in the shed and it's 10 o'clock at night and you're looking at a cow and you're wondering, you know, what's her story? And it's there so you can just look her up, see her dry, out, dry date, when she calved last, when she's due. You know, all that stuff is there in front. It's very helpful in that situation because by the time you go back in, it's gone out of your head, you yeah. know, what, what one you're looking at. So I, I, I want to maximize my profits. I want to, I want to get the best out of my cows. Um, and obviously that's, that's what you, you've been doing, but like, what are your, your, your top tips? What I really, really need to focus on now? What should my route be? What should my plan be? Well, I suppose, look at it, it all goes back to EBI driven. So we're, we're, we're in, a, in a world today that kilos of solids are critical to both profitability and output. So on this farm, we would have achieved maybe three to four cent of an increase in, in milk value over the last six to eight years, you know, through, through breeding, through EBI, you know, and I suppose it's so important that that financial part of the farm, you know, the way it works and the physical part of the farm in terms of getting to grass, you know, as we'll touch on, and, um, and then the environmental piece, you know, which is critical and important. That's why EBI is so important to the environment because we need to get cows, you know, grazing grass and out at grass and producing, you know, milk at the right time of the year. So when I sit down and look at my catalogs and I'm looking at EBI, I can't help but just keep looking at production sub-index and saying, you know, a better cow, higher EBI, lots of milk, lots of solids. Mm. How important is fertility? Well, so the fertility comes back to the, the calving interval of the cow. So you need to maximize profit, maximize kilos of, kilos of solids. The cow needs to calve early in the year. It's as simple as that. So if you're going to calve her in May or you're going to calve her in February, you'll take February every day yeah. because you have the chance to get the output out of the cow over the growing season with the growing season. Would you value fertility as your most important trait at this point? Absolutely. It still is 10 years on the most important part of it to me. This is my, my first year uh, back dairying and uh, there's an awful lot of mistakes I've made in my first year and there's things that I'm, I'm learning going along the way. I haven't really developed my own philosophy yet because I think it's just an amalgamation of everyone else's so far but what, what would your philosophy be in terms mm. of, of farming? Well my dad always said if you don't make mistakes you don't make anything so don't worry about mistakes you know you can you, you know don't make it twice that's the only thing you know and I suppose on farm you know, I've invested quite a lot of money on, on the farm and I've never regretted one investment that I've made on farm. That's my driver, is just to make the environment good to work in. The place is, is a farm there that I can be proud of and it's a place that somebody else can enjoy working with me in. Just back from Larry's and he's given me an awful lot to think about. I mean, the way he talked about fertility, compact calving, advice he gave me one was the the to-do list function on my herd app which shows that I've uh, got a few cows to dry off but at this time of year every leader counts it's hard to know what the right thing to do is.